Good morning and welcome to Transform. Uh, today we have the privilege of hearing the second set of presentations of new commissioned co-created works from the Applied Arts students. Uh, Michelle Peterson will be giving further introductions. So we had a wonderful gathering on Monday and presentations then. We look forward to the presentations from today. Now, welcome to Transform. Today, Applied Arts students and friends are presenting their new co-created works, and I praise and thank the Lord for the works you have created together and for you, for what the Holy Spirit has been showing you and working in your hearts. Commission means to work with an artist or a group of artists to create a new instance of an artistic genre for a specific audience and kingdom goal. So the students have meditated on and studied scripture with a particular cultural audience in mind to help them understand scripture better and relate to it more deeply. And we pray that these works will be a blessing to you as well. The Forum of Bible Agencies International defines scripture engagement as encountering God's word in life-changing ways. Working with local artists, we can help the artists and their communities encounter God's word in life-changing ways. Today we get to hear four presentations, first from Rachel, Asia, and Lois, then Therese and team, Tori and team, and then Don and Kate. Thank you all so much for your hard work and thanks to your teams. Please extend our thanks to them for sharing their work with us. And uh, let's turn it over to Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I will be sharing with you guys the song Seasons, which is a praise song and dance that has been choreographed by Asia Bernard and Lois Huntley. And uh, they choreographed this dance and wrote this song with me going through the clap process. Next slide, please. So who are Asia and Lois? Asia is 11 years old and the daughter of Amber and Nick. She is homeschooled and lives in the trailer park on the ILC campus. She uh, also loves dancing and singing. Lois, right here, is nine years old and the daughter of Adam and Ruth. She is also homeschooled and lives just doors down from Asia. And she also loves dancing and singing right alongside Asia. And if any of you guys know these two, you will know this about them because they are constantly making up songs and choreographing dances. And this is why I chose them because I wanted to give them a little bit more structure to their creativity by using the clap process. Next slide, please. So how did Asia and Lois choose a song and dance? To choose which genre to create in, Asia and Lois put the good things that were already happening in their community and the future hopes they had for their community into the worship wheel. From here, they narrowed down the most immediate hope that they could begin working on right now, which was to sing more. So they chose to write a song and then choreograph a dance to it, which was no surprise. <laughs> Next slide, please. So who were they going to write this song for? Their intended audience for the song are the 12 closest families that make up their community of friends and family and neighbors. Six of the families live in the trailer park on the campus, and the other six live in either Sunset Acres or another nearby neighborhood. Next slide, please. So what inspired the song? Two things. First, the girls' own personal experience living on campus through the seasons together, and several passages of scripture, including the creation and restoration of Eden. Next slide. The girls wrote the songs, sorry, the girls wrote the lyrics to the song with no problem at all, but they needed some help with the music. So they gathered musicians from their community to come alongside them. Nick helped uh, the girls nail down the rhythm for the song, and Ruth helped them record the chords for the song. Then the rest of the musicians came in and joined in on the fun. Pictured there are, are the musicians that were a part of this. Next slide, please. 
So what was the goal of this song? Their goal was to help strengthen their community's identity by producing a song that they could identify with and relate to as neighbors living in God's beautiful world together and enjoying each other's friendships. Next slide. We, uh, we really hope that you enjoy this praise song and dance. Um, please join us in thanking God for his creation and for each other's friendship in this very special community here on the ILC campus. Thank you, and a huge thank you to all the artists, which a lot of uh, them are here today. I'm so honored to present to you Seasons, a praise song and dance. So excited to play outside with you, with you. Icicles on windowsills sparkle in the light. They reflect the sun by day and twinkle in the night. Seasons through the year, each of them is special here. Everything that God has made is beautiful and pure. Everything that's made by God is strong and is sure. All the leaves are budding now and everything is green. Don't close your eyes, just see what God sees. God sees daffodils in yellow robes are blooming. We can see his beauty in everything we pass. Seasons through the year, each of them is special here. Everything that God has made is beautiful and pure. Everything that's made by God is strong and it is sure. Strong summer sunlight, warms our skin, shimmers on the water, and we jump in. All the fruit is ripening, so the trees are dappled with drops of emerald and green. Seasons through the year, each of them is special here. Everything that God has beautiful and pure. Everything that's made by God is strong and it is sure. Now the air is chilled again, the leaves are falling down, painting the world with yellow, red, and brown. We have finally made it through another year of God. Seasons through the year, each of them is special here. Everything that God has made is beautiful and pure. Everything that's made by God is strong and it is sure. Yeah. 
Thank you guys so much for giving Asia and Lois this opportunity to share their amazing creation. I just want to leave you with a question um, to just think about where you live. For those of you who are on this campus, how do you experience the seasons? Are, is your experience of the seasons here uh, filled with childlike wonder of what God is doing all around you? Are you so rushed and uh, worried about where God's going to call you next, that you don't notice the world around you um, that's in front of you and what he's doing. And those of you who aren't here, where has God called you now? Um, are you fully present there? Are you experiencing in um, awe and wonder at what God is doing right in front of you? Um, so I just I leave you with that to ponder for yourselves in your own heart and uh, just encourage you to... Um, ask the Lord to give you childlike wonder like Asia and Lois have. Um, and so now I'll turn it over to Teresa and what she's worked on. Hi, guys. I'm Teresa. And I would like to share with you a song that I co-created with um, some friends. It's called Así Como Pedro, which means just like Peter. Uh, we went through the clap process, which is the creating local arts together process in order to create this song. And um, so the artists that I worked with are Simeon Mejia, Gaspar Mejia, Otto, Veronica Lopez, Jenny Garcica Lopez, Mildred, and myself. Um, and so we began with more art, um, artists um, last um, and gained some more. Um, and during this process, um, we decided that we were going to create a song for the youth group at our church, Asamblea de Dios Josué in Tactique at the Vida Paz. And um, our goal in general is for spiritual growth, um, particularly, as I already said, for people to come to know Christ through your song, to recognize our calling us from God, growth and holiness, genuine intimacy with God in order to achieve a revival and spiritual freedom and to fix our eyes on God. Um, to, um, for our song, we based the lyrics on John 21, 15 through 17, which I'll share in a bit. And um, so this is the chorus that I invite you to sing while you're listening to the song. Um, it's, you can see the rainbow on the back, so you'll notice the chorus. It says, Tu amor por mí es más grande que el, que el inmenso mar. Tu amor por mí permanece fiel. Tu gracia me sostiene, me olvidaré de mí, me entregaré a ti. Um, so if you could just go ahead and play this song, please. Esta preciosa alabanza nació inspirada del libro de Juan, del capítulo 21, versículo 15 al 17, donde nos dice Jesús y Pedro. Cuando terminaron de desayunar, Jesús le preguntó a Pedro, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me amas más que a estos? Él le respondió, sí, señor, tú sabes que te quiero. Jesús le dijo, entonces cuida de mis seguidores, pues son como corderos. Jesús volvió a preguntarle, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me amas? Pedro le contestó, sí, señor, tú sabes que te quiero. Jesús le dijo, entonces cuida de mis seguidores, pues son como ovejas. Por tercera vez le dijo, Simón, hijo de Juan, ¿me quieres? Pedro se puso muy triste de que tres veces le haya preguntado si lo quería. Entonces le contestó, Señor, tú lo sabes todo, tú sabes que te quiero. Jesús le dijo, cuida de mis ovejas.
fallado, mas tú has sido bueno, te he pagado mal, tú me has pagado bien, te he fallado, mas tú has sido bueno, te he pagado mal, tú me has pagado bien.
So I'm just gonna pray with you guys before um, ending the time of repertory. Um, my hope is, and there is, um, there's encouragement in order to like translate this song into the other local language, which is Pukumchim. Um, so please pray with me. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Um, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your grace for saving us and for loving us even despite our sin and our errors, Lord. And I pray that um, you will be with us and that you will use this project in order to um, bring songs into Pokemon Chi, Lord. Um, pray that this will be a catalyst for your work. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for what you have already done. And we pray that you will continue to do. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the time is your story. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Teresa. Uh, while they're pulling up the video, uh, my name is Tori, and I'm one of the students in the Supplied Arts class. Uh, and I'm also one of the commissioned artists. So the project that I did was a collection of works in progress uh, by members of the church community that I'm actually a part of in College Station, Texas. So our goal was to approach the scriptures creatively, uh, specifically in this case, it was Psalm 46. And other than coming together to talk about what our community could benefit from, from this project and meditating corporately on Psalm 46, uh, we were all free to respond in whatever creative avenue we wanted to. Uh, and we ran in very different directions. <laughs> so we all started in Psalm 46 and then it went from there and we came back and we evaluated and we're shocked at everything that was created. And so I've got this one big conglomeration of works uh, that are all largely finished, uh, but they're representative of a bigger work in progress. So our intended audience was the community that we're actually currently in. And so essentially this is just gonna pull back the curtain. You're gonna look at uh what's going on at grace bible church uh and just good to share it with you um so this project is in kind of two parts ish uh, and i wanted to warn you because the transition from the first half to the second half is kind of quiet i don't want to i don't want you to miss some of the background uh that was going on but other than that whenever the video is ready please please enjoy a place that I know that has a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Come, there is a place that I know where God dwells in our midst and we will not be moved. Be still and know that He is God. He is a present. 
help him refuge exalt his name among the nations for he is with you he is with you Works of the Lord, His immeasurable strength exceeds armies of men. Come, behold the works of the Lord. If He utters His voice, the earth will surely.
that's the end of that. All of these works are uh, still in progress. I haven't even finished. I was painting the ukulele on this side. I haven't even finished that yet. It still needs a coat of Mod Podge. Uh, our digital artist is still working and there's still details on the Minecraft. Uh, and we're thinking about professionally recording this girl's uh, acoustic song. Um, so everything is still in progress. Uh, and our goal was to inspire one another to approach the Bible more creatively uh, and with the intent to create something unique and silly and fun to share with one another. And so we're hopeful that this will continue to spark our creativity and will continue to spark the creativity around us. So thank you so much for letting me share part of my community with you. Uh, and our last performance of Chapel will be Dawn. So Dawn, whenever you are ready. Here I am. Hi, good morning. I am Don Lowry. I worked with my friend Kate Peacock to develop a set of poetry that is based off of Daniel 9, 1 through 19, in which Daniel confesses and repents of the sins of his ancestors. The intended audience is um, whites in general, but not necessarily believers, as well as more indirectly the Tolua tribe of Crescent City, California, where I am from. The goal is to start conversations toward reconciliation and ultimately for God to bring healing to our nation. In the slides, I included pictures from the Ohio River Valley where one of my ancestors settled, as well as from Crescent City, California, including the Peacock Ranch where Kate's family settled and where her family still lives. This is Conversation with a Recovering Racist. My first of one family line in the New World was the first circuit riding creature in the Ohio River Valley. The Indian Wars came. He chose his side. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. But hatred simmered. Generations down, my great grandfather, heir of the one who hated Indians like poison, perhaps never knew his wife had Indian blood. Hatred quenched in one generation, but the wounds, how long do they linger? Before I knew what racism was, I read of unthinkable things white people, my presumed race did. Later, I remember the shock when I found out how my family settled their land by doing equally bloody things. The history was personal this time. It's not a story I'm proud of telling, but it needs to be told. I didn't know that George Peacock immigrated to California in 1850, told the indigenous Tolowa families there they had 10 days to leave, then killed them and took their land when they didn't obey. I learned the Peacocks took Delaney and her brothers as indentured slaves. The Susquehannock were once dominant giants, master traders. Early encounters with the whites, gifts of smallpox laden blankets, wars, disease, assimilation, captivity, until a few dozen remained. Raiding party from another tribe, whites up in arms innocent Susquehannock annihilated. How thankful I am the Quakers found them first. I will see them again, my people with Christ. I learned how Delaney's children were taken to residential schools, tribesmen to reservations killed by the white man, their culture and customs outlawed. I learned of their persistence, their resilience in the face of modern racism. I am learning to confess these wrongs and the arrogance underlying them. I cannot change the past, but I can acknowledge my family's legacy. The two streams mingle. We, we their, their uneasy heirs, pray, pray the cleansing of our land and the and healing, the healing of our of people. Our people all our people. Creator God who rules this earth, you heard the cries of your people in the past, forgave their wrongs and healed their land. 
You dealt with them justly, yet in mercy, grieving over their apathetic numbness of spirit and yearning for them to return to you. We are proud, arrogant, apathetic, deaf to the pain of others, conceited, dismissing the worth of others, blind to injustices still being done, whether intentionally or unintentionally, unwilling to listen, compromise, see another's cultural identity, perspective, rights. Love your neighbor as yourself, and we have failed. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Again, we have failed. Let justice roll down like waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Still, we fail. And our schools shatter at gunpoint. Innocent families fractured like bones, unable. unable to withstand the pervasive pressure of generational, generational rage and hatred. Blood and crushing pain intermingle, intermingle, independent of neighborhood, ethnicity, or social status. Wounds fester as individuals, as families, as a nation. While we lie and think we can smile their existence away. So for the sake of the ones I love, I beg you, creator, to hear our plea. White cousins are killing and being killed along with cousins of Black, Indigenous, and other people of color. Because of the pride that our society is built upon. And, and because, because of, our, of own our own pride, I know I have been complicit in this system in the past, turning a deaf ear to their cries. I know I have arrogance of my own. And I am sorry. I don't know what action will look like, but please forgive me for the lip service I have paid in the past. Self-respect does not have to mean arrogance. arrogance toward the neighbors we forget to see. We have twisted the truth. Twisted history to suit our wants, silenced by fear and self-preservation. Even churches sometimes complicit in the abuse. Pride is such a petty reason for people to die. Wherever I look, I see stains and brokenness, but also hope. I know that you, our creator, will bring justice, justice and, and mercy. mercy to this family, even though it may hurt to be part of it. However it may look, justice is still good, even if we struggle to trust you. If there is one thing I've learned about racism, it is the arrogance with which one speaks and acts. Idealism refusing to see people as they are, like bullies controlling a recess schoolyard, on a local, national, and international stage. I've heard it said we react negatively to others' pride when we see it as negatively affecting our own. White people generally haven't learned how to be proud of our cultures without belittling others. It is said that pride goes before a fall. I am no stranger to this pride, Despite my best intentions, I am learning these influences are still there. There is no way to bring back lives lost, gone as some of the richness of tint and shade. Sometimes I see my disease reflected in the tears in your eyes, the pain of your scars, and I cry too. Despite many generations removed, you are still my cousin. James 4, 5 to 10 in the First Nations version. Do you think our sacred teachings have no meaning when they tell us that Creator's spirit in us longs for us to be faithful and true to Him? 
but his gift of great kindness is more than enough, just as our sacred teachings also say. The great spirit stands against the proud and arrogant, but he shows great kindness to the humble of heart. So humbly follow all of creator's ways. Make your stand against the evil trickster, and he will turn and run from you. Draw near to the great spirit, and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands clean of your broken ways and purify your hearts and minds from trying to walk two different roads. Cry out in your misery, be sad and weep. Turn your laughter into sadness and your joy into tears. Humble yourselves in the sight of the great spirit and he will lift you up to a place of honor. Thank you, Michelle. Would all of you pray with me, please? Father in heaven, our creator, you see our nation and the wounds that still remain. You see the things that we don't even know about that still need to be dealt with. Father, wherever we go, wherever you would place us, will you enable us to be agents of this reconciliation, of this healing, of bringing to light the things in darkness? Father, will you be glorified and heal our land? Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you to Rachel and Teresa and Tori and Dawn who commissioned these works and their co-creators. Um, we have seen some pretty amazing array this morning of ways to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, to close us out now, some announcements, several things coming up, and I'll try to mention them in chronological order. At 1 o'clock in about one hour, uh, Jason Penny will be defending his thesis in Mailer classroom number eight at 415. Um, mentors and memories at um, Cowan Apartments uh, with those who have uh, been pioneers before us in the Lord's work. On uh, sat on pardon me on Friday, uh, teach us to pray uh, with the uh, Pioneer Bible Translators uh, Chapel at 11.15 with Claire Smitham. On Saturday at 12 noon, the Student Body Association Spring Picnic at noon. Um, see Katrina Desai for help with setup for that. And there are also uh, due today nominations for Student um, Body Association are due. Um, and then on Monday, Karen Cornelison will be speaking in Transform at 11.15 on Colossians chapter 3, and then on Wednesday is the Spring Baccalaureate Transform Chapel. So thank you, and you are dismissed. Have a great afternoon and the rest of the week.